My name is Tejo Gagda and uh, I'm sis- I'm a sister to one of the Kenyans who is there and his name is Ravi Gagda. I represent all the other three Kenyans as well. Their names are Anthony Kea, Anthony Mwadime, Boniface Shuma and Ravi Gagda. These are the four Kenyans that were arrested on 29th of May last year from a company called Click Technologies in South Sudan. They the owner of the company is a government officer and the national security of South Sudan had come to arrest himself who's called Mr. John Agao and while he was being arrested everybody in the vicinity of that office was arrested as well there were five Kenyans that were initially arrested along with some customers some of Mr. John Agao's friends and cleaners etc we were on the phone with Ravi and, han- and and that's why we knew that something had happened but nobody was able to explain as to where they were being taken or why they were being taken after a week of no news from anybody we sent our family members to go and look for him and when the families traveled and asked questions about why and where these people were taken they were threatened to say if you ask about this case you will be arrested as well and knowing what South Sudan does they took the next flight and came back home We then went to our ministry here at Foreign Affairs and lodged a formal complaint in writing that there has been an issue going on in South Sudan with these Kenyans but we're not aware of what has happened and if they could get in touch with their counterparts and advise. We had several meetings back and forth again for the same issue where there were times where they would call our people suspects there was a time they called our people state witnesses we had a back and forth until we decided to do a media conference which was sometime last year in in July or August. That is the first time Foreign Affairs actually gave an audience to these family members and addressed that there was an investigation going on with the owner of the company and these five Kenyans have been taken to finalize the investigation and we should give South Sudan time to complete their due process. When we asked about how long the due process would take, they had no response. However, we kept going on with their meetings back and forth. In October last year, we had a protest on on the streets and it was a hunger strike where all the family members had decided that they were going to sit outside their offices until they were given any response for their family members. And that is the first time where we met our Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Amina Muhammad, and she addressed us as families to tell us that she was using diplomatic channels to sort this issue out and she assured us that she would be bringing our people back home very soon. And she also mentioned that we should be able to stay away from media as we were jeopardizing this issue and hence we stayed away from media. We waited until February January 2016 is when one of the Kenyans was released. He was called Peter Muriuki. There was no explanation given or there was no he was threatened as well to speak to our family members and we understood that he had been tortured for the for the 9 months that he had been illegally detained and hence we let him be. February is the first time when these people were taken to court and we thought because they're they have nothing to fear we should let them go to court and get a fair trial. When we started the court process we asked for bail for these people and bail was set at 14 million dollars per person which was unacceptable because we are all simple families that is not an amount that we could even think about and hence we told the lawyers to drop the request for bail. Our, the second violation was that our lawyers were never allowed to speak to his clients which was again a human rights violation because of not meeting with the clients they would write notes in court and hand it over to the lawyers that can be used to defend themselves the lawyer mr kir chol was threatened at gunpoint snatched away from the communication and asked to drop the case and he dropped the case we had no legal representation for about a week or two and the court trial went on without our legal representation witnesses were intimidated threatened not to go to court to testify the ones who testified were also arrested we were not given time to complete the trial process as well however throughout the whole trial process of 5 months we had briefings with the foreign affairs ministry where they assured us that these kenyans had no mention in the whole of court process and that we should give south sudan court due process to complete this this the trial we did that 13th of june our lawyers had assured us that kenyans would be coming home because of no mention however they were sentenced to life imprisonment along with the other south sudanese so there were 16 people sentenced to life imprisonment so that is not for the kenyans that is actually for the south sudanese we have senior ministers from the south sudanese government that are accused in this case as well from us as kenyan families we have never been asked for any money 
But what they have done is they have combined the case and arrested all 16 of them and convicted them of the same crime. We then went to the parliament here as well, and we met with Honorable Adan Duale, who assured the family members that he will be able to assist as he knows that South Sudanese are capable of harassing these Kenyans. And this could be another case of victimized. He asked a question to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as to why these Kenyans have been arrested, why they were convicted. And to that, our minister responded that the government is aware that these Kenyans have been wrongfully convicted without any evidence. So this means our government knows that these Kenyans are innocent. This was done in 4th of July this year, 2016. We're at end of year today. And we have had no feedback from foreign affairs as to how they're taking this issue. They have been telling us they're using diplomatic channels to sort this issue out. We all know South Sudan is at war. They were at war in July where our Kenyans were in prison. These Kenyans had never been fed during that time. They survived on the little bit of water or, or anything that they could find around that place. They have all lost so much weight. They have been falling ill because of the conditions in that prison. Yet, when we address this to the Foreign Affairs Ministry here, we're not able to get any urgent action being taken against these people. My question is why? These are citizens of this country. We were there when, they were being, when our leaders were being voted. And now it is time for this state to be able to protect its citizen, whether they're in this country or whether they're in another foreign country. My appeal is to the head of state of this country, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta. As family members, we plead, we have exhausted all means in terms of every single office that we have. We have met with every officials, we have done all our protocols, but we now appeal to you. We know that it is in your hands, that you can be able to sort our issue out and be able to bring our citizens back home. Hence, our appeal to you to take this urgently and be able to assist these families to bring these innocent Kenyans back home.